Hello friends, we are back. This is part two of Sun in Various Houses by Sir James. Sir, a warm welcome. Thank you. So there was one more question that I have. Uh, you said wherever the sun is and whoever is close to the degree of the sun, that planet gets burned. Bur burned. We also call it as converse. But there is yeah. one planet, Mercury, who forms a Buddha Aditya Yoga with the sun. So what do you say about this year? I think, I think that <clears throat> when Mercury is near the sun, <clears throat> I think it gives extreme intelligence. I think it gives extreme intelligence. But I also, I also think it, you know, I mean, it probably gets less burned than the other planets. I, I you know, I would say. But also, you know, uh, one of the things that you were asking me is whether the sun could be cruel by nature, by nature. And I would say, I would say, if you think of the planets as gods, right? You get next to Saturn and Saturn says, here's your karma. Here's your karma. You get next to Mars and you get some friction or some fighting. But a planet gets near the sun and the sun torches it. The planet gets torched like don't even think like saturn will say come on come near me i'll give you your karma mars will say come near me and i'll i'll, I'll give you some fighting or some military the sun says don't even think of getting near me you get near me you're gonna die from you i'm gonna burn you you're gonna melt so in that sense you know the other thing is um i think that if the sun is very afflicted or in certain ways damaged, I think the person could have heart problems aside, like if a person's sun is afflicted by Saturn, by being in a bad sign, you can have heart problems, okay? Heart problems, both by the sun and by the fourth house, is not simply physical heart problems. The heart we all know as the emotions. So when you find people with Saturn and the sun, it depends on the signs and stuff, but you oftentimes find a person who functions all from their intellect and very little from their heart. They don't really have compassion. They don't really have the softer qualities because, because their, their heart is damaged. And so a person with a damaged heart could be cruel. They could, you know, they could be, they could be cruel, but I, but I, I don't want to offend this. <laughs> no, I, uh, I have to think about that. It's an interesting one, but, but but I don't want to call somebody cruel who gives me life. You know, the moon doesn't give me life. Mercury doesn't give Just me life. Just a rough translation of a Hindi word, cruel. Yeah. It has to be sometimes, not always. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. listen, if you get near it, you get burned. That's pretty cruel. Okay. Okay. The sun in the seventh house. The first thing I'm going to say about the sun in the seventh house relates to when I was in India with my first teacher, Santanam. Santanam has the sun had, he died in 1997, I think. Santanam had the sun in the seventh house and he had to elope because the, dow the dowry wasn't big enough or some problem, right? And I remember, he said, if the son is in the seventh house, there would be a problem with the marriage from the family. Something will get in the way, okay? And I found this very interesting because my brother, I have, I have two brothers, and one brother married uh, a girl who was uh, not all Jewish. She was part Jewish. And the family went nuts 
and he had to go elope. And in Santanam's case, there was a problem and the, the family didn't like the dowry and so they had to elope. And that's an odd state, it's an odd thing, but it happens once in a while that something gets in the way of the marriage. Now, the more essential part of the son in the seventh house is that the son is the soul. It's your soul and your spirit. It's in the house of your partner. This is a difficult, this is a difficult placement. And it's kind of like the sun in, Li, in Libra. The sun is considered fallen in the sign of Libra, which is the sign of the spouse and partners. So you give all, a Libra person gives all their energy to everybody else and not to themselves. It's the opposite of the sun in Aries, which is all about the self. So the sun in the seventh house is not a good placement for general happiness and things going well. It's not a great placement. Um, first of all, that's where you want to have energy, fire. Uh, you know, you, you want to be active in the house of relationships. I've seen people with the sun in the seventh house very closely, people I've known closely, it's very hard for them to be without a relationship. They have to be married. When a relationship ends, and oftentimes they do with the son in the seventh house because the son is a malefic, not so much in India because they don't divorce, but in America, they'll get divorced. Any malefic in the seventh, there's a high chance of divorce. As soon as they divorce, they jump into another marriage. As soon as they break up, they jump into an because the sun is the soul. It's it's your battery. It's 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 it wants action. So you want to be in a relationship. The sun in the seventh house person can get a relationship. You know, some people they want relationships, but nobody loves them or they can't find the right person. The person with the sun in the seventh house, they're in a relationship quickly. Other people, you know. Uh, First of all, any planet in the seventh house is going to make a person outgoing, you know, able to interact with people. So a person with the sun in the seventh house, they're not shy. They will gravitate to other people. They'll interact with other people um, and they'll get in a relationship quickly. But the partner is bossy. Make no mistake. The partner is bossy and the partner is strong willed. And the partner can be successful and powerful. Again, it depends on how the sun is aspected. But if it's just the sun, I would expect the partner to be uh, powerful, strong-willed, bossy, anything like, like that. Now, I have seen cases where the, where the sun in the seventh house gives a cruel partner, gives a partner who is too domineering, too selfish, you know, like, like that. So uh, it's not really a, it's not really a very good placement unless it's very well aspected. I would say it's not so good. It's great for business. The seventh house makes you able to interact with people and therefore it's very good for business. So that's it. Um, the sun in the eighth house. If the sun in the seventh house is afflicted and the seventh house is afflicted in other ways, then you're likely to live away from your homeland. If the seventh house is very afflicted, person is likely to live overseas. Now that's not, the sun alone won't do that, but the sun is one affliction. To the seventh house if you have more mars aspects the seventh and saturn aspect you know the, the worse the seventh house gets the more likely they are to leave their country and they may be okay in the other country or they may not that depends on the ninth house but seventh house afflicted can be living in a foreign country the sun in the eighth house is very psychological it's a very psychological, emotional position. The son in the seventh house does not help the father. The son is the father in the eighth or the twelfth. It's not good for the father. 
But the sun in the eighth house is a house of transformation. The eighth house is the house of attachments, suffering from attachments. I want this, I can't have it, they suffer. Or, you know, I want people to treat me a certain way. They don't treat me that way. They say something I don't like, they really suffer. So with the sun in the seventh house, there is a great deal of emotional transformation. The whole lifetime is, it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process of, ouch, that hurt. And then trying to uh, fix it. Ouch, you said something I don't like. And then they try to fix it. So it's very psychological. It's very transformative. And so they can grow a lot. They can grow because the pain of the attachments causes them to grow. But the process of attachment and trying to deal with those attachments, it never stops. The whole lifetime is a process of emotional, working on the psychology, working on the, the sun is not the emotions, but the eighth house, Scorpio house is a very emotional, deep, deep house, but it's not so good for the father. Um, the sun in the eighth house, does not help the person's leadership, does not help their confidence, does not help any of that stuff. It makes a lifetime, like the sun in the sixth house, you, you run, you, you know, I ran to do meditation, I ran to do a special diet, I ran to do all these different techniques. But the, and I also have mercury in the sixth house as well. But the sun in the eighth house, it's not like they're running to work on themselves. But they keep getting hurt. They keep suffering on a daily basis. Ouch, that hurt. So they have to figure out why did that hurt? So it's a lot of, that's how I see the sun and the eighth. Now, they could easily work with other people's money. The sun is in the house of other people's money. Banking, if the fifth house is strong, stockbroker, anything like that. Um, and there's going to be a very strong interest in astrology, metaphysics, psychic subjects things like that they could you know wind up to be an astrologer they'll have an interest in that um yeah the sun in the ninth house you see a lot as an astrologer in the early days of when i was practicing astrology i saw so many people coming to me with the sun in the ninth house they just love religion they love philosophy uh Sun in the ninth is not about astrology, but people would be coming. So many people with Sun in the ninth would be coming for readings because they love anything philosophical. And being that it was Hindu astrology, that was even better because they see in America, they see that as a religion. And so, you know, it, it's more interesting to them. Um, the Sun in the ninth house um, can create a real strong. Uh, activity with gurus and with the father. The son in the ninth, um, the father can be powerful. The father can be like a, a teacher to the child. You know, the father can be like a religious, spiritual teacher to the, to the father. Um, and, and sometimes you'll see lawyers. Anytime the ninth house and Jupiter and Mars, the ninth house and Jupiter and Mars, if those are prominent, then you oftentimes have a, a lawyer like that. Um, but that's where they, and travel. I, I, again, it's not that there's an interest in religion. It's not that there's an interest in travel. It's that they want travel. They want religion. They're going to do something about it because the sun is the soul. It's the heart. It's the, it's what, you know, keeps you alive. So they're going to be active with travel, law, religion, philosophy, father, things like that. The son in the 10th house is a quintessential leader. If the son is in the 10th house, you always, like, if a person has the moon in the 10th house, I will say this, this is a career lifetime. The moon, which is your emotions and your feelings and the most important planet is in the house of career. It's a career lifetime. 
you should be the center of attention. That's the moon. The sun in the 10th house is, I want to be the leader. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to be the leader. I'll be the politician. I'll be the boss. It's very, very active. It's just very, very active. The career with the sun in the 10th house can be connected to um, politics. It can be connected to, to um, it can be connected, I'm told, to being a pharmacist. I don't know why that is, but I have read that several times. Um, the sun in the 10th house, it's, it's a career. I mean, it depends where the moon and the ascendant ruler is. So I can't say that the sun in the 10th house means that it's a career lifetime. There could be all sorts. There could be all sorts of other stuff going on that makes it an educational lifetime or a financial lifetime. This, but the sun wants to be the leader. The sun wants to be a leader. Um, so that's how I see it. So it, 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 it doesn't mean that, oh, the lifetime is gonna be all about career. It doesn't mean that, but it means that in whatever career you do, there is leadership. It, it also is a strong likelihood that your father was a leader, that your father was powerful, assuming the son isn't afflicted. If the son's afflicted, the father could be tyrannical, could be not so nice, you know. But the son in the son in the tenth house, I think, is a very, I think it's a very good placement for success in life, you know. Um, the sun in the 11th house, the person is going to want to be very active with friends and with groups, friends and groups. Um, the sun in the 11th house usually is going to mean that the eldest sibling is masculine or that the eldest sibling is strong-willed or bossy, like that. And the sun is the soul. So the son, so the person can have a strong connection to the eldest sibling. Um, and the sun in the 11th house, more than the moon, more than the ascendant ruler, the sun in the 11th house is going to mean that the person is very likely to have their hands in several different areas. So they may have a career, they may make money from their job, but they're going to want to have a couple different ways for money to come in. So maybe they get together with a friend and they say, hey, why don't we do this business on the side or um, just side ventures, things, things where money can come in, especially large sums of money. So the job, whether the job makes a lot of money is going to depend upon whether the second house is strong. But whether the person gets wealthy oftentimes depends on the 11th house being powerful, large sums of money. So once a year, twice a year, I sell a house and a big chunk comes in. Once a year, twice a year, I sell a, a painting for $50,000. It's completely different from the second house where it's a daily money coming in on a daily basis. Um, the sun in the seventh house is going to make the desires strong. Not the daily desires, but the major goals and desires. In other words, the third house and the seventh house are the daily desires. If the third house and seventh house are weak, whenever you go to do something, something gets in the way constantly. Everything is hard work to get something done. If the third house and the seventh, seventh house are good, you breeze through life, getting desires fulfilled. When you wanna do something, it, it is nothing in the way. The 11th house is different. The 11th house is the major goals and desires, the things you want really, really badly. Um, Hillary Clinton has the 11th house ruler, the sun in the ninth or 10th degree of Libra fallen she hit the sun dasha 
right about a year or a year and a half before the election. And the more she wanted it, the less she could get it. And it was government that kind of got in the way. According to her, the, all that business about the, uh, the email scandal or whatever it was, according to her, that killed her presidency and that was done by the government. So the son is the government. It was a force against her. Um, but the son rules her 11th. The more she wants something, the harder it is to get. If she doesn't want it so badly, it's easier to get. But the 11th house is the major goals. So if the 11th house is very strong, you get your major goals in life fulfilled. And the sun being, even some, it's a malefic, but it's an Upachaya house. And the sun is the spirit and the soul. You are likely to be active in getting your major goals and desires fulfilled with the sun in the 11th house. It's a good placement. Um, the friends may be more masculine. You may have more man friends if the sun is in the 11th house. And friends will be very important. Um, the son in the 12th house, bad for the father. Very strong interest in moksha, can be a very strong interest in enlightenment, moksha, evolution. Um, the son in the 12th house harms the son, so it hurts the heart. The son in the eighth and the son in the 12th doesn't help the heart. Uh, uh, it can be, it can be an interest in debts and expenses. Depends on the horoscope, but the twelfth house, you know, it's definitely bad and it causes problems. But on the positive side, it represents moksha, enlightenment. So there's an interest in evolution and enlightenment. But there can also be an interest in handling debts and expenses. So. A person with planets in the 12th house, the sun, the moon, or a stellium of planets, a bunch of planets, oftentimes that person can work for a company and they say, let me handle, let me handle the finances. Not, not to be an accountant, but to be able to manage the debts, to not let debts get out of hand, to be able to save money, you know, things like that. Um, but I do think that the sun in the 12th house is not so good for the confidence. It's not good for confidence. It's not good for leadership. And I think that it creates a lot of subconscious energies, a lot of um, you know, subconscious complexes and things like that. If a person has, say, the sun in the 12th house, and then a dasha of the sun comes along, it's quite likely that they will start having dreams about their childhood. They'll start having memories about their childhood, about any of the things that went on that are affecting their subconscious mind. Uh, so it comes up to the surface, but um, it's, it's, it's a spiritual placement. It's not a great placement. A good number of people with the sun in the, in the 12th house will actually work for hospitals. They will work for, so you have the sixth house is health and healing, meaning uh, nursing and self-improvement and diets. The sun in the 12th house, which is a Pisces house, is someone who would, would enjoy working in a hospital, they wouldn't mind. I remember I had a friend with the son in the 12th house and he was spiritual, working on enlightenment, meditating, going to meditation courses. And we were supposed to reduce our stress as much as possible. He said he wanted to work in an ambulance. I said, are you crazy? That means you're going to be going to accidents, seeing people bleeding and dying. Didn't bother him at all. Um, and that's that has something to do with, you know, the son in the 12th house, the person wants to help, you know, you know, people in serious conditions, they may want to help. But it's a good spiritual placement, but it's not good for the son. Doesn't help the father, doesn't help the will, 
but it, do, it doesn't help the willpower. It doesn't help the confidence. That's the, that's the biggest problem is that mm -hmm. it makes the person, you know, instead of, instead of the, the soul energy being active in the world, it's much more, you know, spiritual held back. It's, it's like that. Yes. Perfect. Okay. In case you have missed the first part, please do go and watch the first part of this. And plus, uh, sir has given this book at just $7. James Braha Sutras is just $7 as an ebook on Google Pay, uh, Play. You all can just go and purchase that and read all the sutras. We, uh, you can send in emails if you if you find the sutras correct or if there is any uh, uh, anything you want to clear out with him. We give all the links in the description box to connect to sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a lovely session. My pleasure. Hope to see you soon, sir.